Welcome to our continuing series, Seeking the New Poetry, Poems of K. D. Setna, Amal Kiran, Part 14. Mukti. What deep dishonor that the soul should have its passion molded by a moon of change, and all its massive purpose be a wave ruled by time's gilded glamours that estrange being from its true goal of motionless eternity, ecstatic and alone, poised in calm plenitudes of consciousness, a sea unheard where spume nor spray is blown, be still, oceanic heart. Withdraw thy sense from fickle lure of outward fulgencies. Clasp not in vain the myriad earth to appease the hunger of thy God profundities. Not there, but in self-rapturous suspense of all desire is thy omnipotence. Sri Aurobindo's comment, congratulations, it is an exceedingly good sonnet. You have got the sonnet movement very well. Nocturne, my words would bring through atmospheres of calm the new moon smile that breathes unto the heart secrets of love lost in clay-captured kisses. The evening star, like some great bird whose fury dies to a cold, miraculous sudden pause, wings buoyed by sheer forgetfulness of earth. And oh, that dream nostalgia in the air the sky remembrance of dew-perfumed dust. I would disclose the one ethereal beauty calling across lone fires and fragrances. But vain were music, vain all light of rapture that drew not sense a pathway to strange sleep nor woke a passion billowing through the body in search of realms no eye boats ever reached. Sri Aurobindo's comment, very fine indeed. This time you have got the blank verse all right. Owing to the weight and power you have been able to put into the movement as well as the thought and language. Nothing to criticize. The lines give a quite coherent development and there is a single aspiration throughout. It has almost the full sonnet effect in spite of the absence of the rhyme structure. Deluge. You fear Clay's solid rapture will be gone if once your love dives deep to the unknown. But how shall body not seem a hollow space when the soul bears eternity's embrace? Eternity, which to the outward glance is some unmoving painted sea of trance, lifeless, an artist's dream, till suddenly those phantom colors wake, and the whole sea hurls from its pictured distance, drowning the eyes in a passionate world of dense infinities. No longer will you talk of shadowy bliss. With measureless life, God comes, and flesh form sways like a weed in his unfolding storm. 
Sri Aurobindo's comment, it is extremely fine and quite revealing and effective. Himalaya, the tides of gold and silver sweep the sky, but bring no tremor to my countenance. How shall sunrise or moon ebb lure when I have gripped the eternal in a rock of trance? Here centuries lay down their pilgrim cry, drowsed with the power in me to press my whole bulk of unchanging peace upon the eye and weigh that vision deep into the soul. My frigid love no calls of earth can stir. Straight upwards climbs my hush, but this lone flight reveals me to broad earth, an emperor ruling all time's horizons through sheer height. Sri Aurobindo's comment, a very fine poem. The lines marked are very fine, and line four, superlatively so. And the last poem, Absolute, luster, whose vanishing joint we call the sun, joy, whose one drop drowns seas of all desire, life rendering time's heart a hollow hush, potence of poise unplumbed by infinite space. Not unto you I strain, O miracle boons, but that most inward marvel, the sheer self who bears your beauty and, devoid of you, his dark unknown would yet fulfill my love. Sri Aurobindo's comment, no, they are not stiff. The expression is successful and the rhythm harmonious. The first three lines are magnificent. <laughs>